down Main Street, you're relaxed and feeling good. Next thing that you know, you see it. Octopus in the neighborhood, surfing on the sine wave, swinging through the stars. Yeah. Take a left at Joe and Tastin, pick your second right past Mars on the magic school bus. Navigator Nostril, climb on the magic school bus. Make a plane turn to Take that. on our magic school bus. Drop the river of love. So strap your bones right to the seat Come on in and don't be shy Come on. Just to make your day complete You might get back into a pile On the magic school bus Step inside, it's a wild ride Come on, right on the magic school bus This is terrible I've lost some of the rocks and minerals from my collection What am I going to do? Lost rocks? Lost minerals? Not a problem, Arnold. We'll take a field trip and go directly to the source. are really cool because they're like giant geological diaries. The Grand Canyon by Tim. Click on the different tabs to check out all the sections of my report. Sedimentation. Rock factory. There are three kinds of sedimentary rock. Clastic, organic, and chemical. Clastic rocks are formed from little pieces of broken rock. Sandstone is a classic rock made of tightly packed sand grains. Organic rocks are made from plant or animal remains. Ocean plants and animals use calcite crystals to make their hard parts. When they die, the hard parts are left, and this makes the rock limestone. Chemical rocks are formed by chemical changes, such as evaporation. Rock salt is a chemical rock. It's what you'll find on the ground after a salty lake or sea dries up. Set a what? Sediments are grains of sand that are made of other rocks or minerals. Sediments can get moved around by wind, rain, rivers, glaciers, and oceans. When the little grains of sand drop out of the wind, water, or ice, and are deposited on the ground, then that is called sedimentation. Those layers of sediment can get covered by other layers or strata, like the layers of a cake. The bottom layers of sediment can get scrunched down flat by the layers on top, and the weight from the strata on top eventually cements the tiny grains of sediment into solid rock. Rock History Sedimentary rocks are like history books that tell us the story of what Earth was like a long, long time ago. Think of sedimentary rocks as clues. Clues that can help us to figure out things like which areas were on land and which areas were underwater. For instance, pieces of limestone might tell us where a coral reef formed long ago and a layer of coal might show us where a swamp or a prehistoric forest once lived. Fossils Pictures of the past Fossils are like nature snapshots from millions, even billions of years ago. If a prehistoric plant or animal got buried under layers of sand or mud, the softest part would rot away pretty quickly. But the hard parts like shells, bones, or tree trunks would be replaced over time by minerals. That's the way that most fossils are formed. But some are formed from the tracks that animals leave behind, like dinosaur footprints. These fossils are called trace fossils. Erosion. Glaciers. 
Glaciers form in the very coldest places, like way up high in the mountains, where it's so freezing cold that the snow can't all melt. The snow piles up and forms ice. Thick layers of ice that move are called glaciers. Eventually, the glacier is so heavy that it slowly slides downhill, eroding rocks in its path and carrying them down with it as it slides. Lower down the mountain, when the glacier finally melts, it lets loose all those rocks that were frozen in the ice, and it carves nifty shapes into the land. For instance, Yosemite Valley has steep-sided walls that were carved out by glaciers. Rivers shape the earth. Rivers and streams may not seem very powerful, but they have helped to shape our earth. The rivers sort the sediments by first dropping the bigger, heavier grains like boulders down into the riverbed, and then carrying the smaller, lighter grains such as mud way out to sea. Rivers carve out valleys, and in some places where there are no trees, they can create really, really cool landscapes like canyons. It's hard to imagine, but it's true. All it takes is one little river with a whole lot of patience. Breakdown. Land that is exposed to ice, wind, and water is gradually worn down by them. Here is an example of how it works. Chemicals in rain, temperature changes, and any number of other things can eat away at an exposed rock. The rock gets weaker and weaker until it finally breaks apart. This is called weathering. You could say it's called weathering because of what the weather does to the rock. After this, the rock pieces that are made from weathering get swept away by water, ice, or wind. This is called erosion. All across the surface of the earth, erosion is busy happening. <laughs> it's really cool that caves get made by water underground. by Dorothy Ann. Click on the different tabs to investigate all the sections of my report. Kinds of faults. Kinds of faults. Faults are cracks in the rocks on the surface of the earth. When the rocks move on either side of the crack, that makes an earthquake. There are different kinds of faults. One kind is where rocks are shoved away in an up-down movement. This is called a normal fault. A reverse fault has the same up-down movement as a normal fault, but one side is being pushed on top of the other side. The third fault type has a side-by-side -side movement, where the rocks slip past each other. This is called a strike-slip fault. The San Andreas Fault in California is a famous strike-slip fault. Earthquakes. What makes quakes? The rocks on both sides of a fault are always under pressure. They're always pushing. They want to keep moving past each other. But sometimes they get stuck, and all that pressure has nowhere to go. And so the pressure builds up until there's way too much of it. Then, when the two sides finally do break free, all that pent-up pressure is released in a violent rush. The rocks move past each other very quickly, and that quick release of pressure is what causes an earthquake. Shake, rattle, and roll. Earthquakes start way down at a spot inside the crust called the focus, which is where rocks release their pent-up pressure along a fault line. During an earthquake, shock waves start at the focus and move outward in all directions. Metamorphic rocks. Regional metamorphic rocks. There are many different kinds of metamorphic rock. Slate is a metamorphic rock that is made from mudstone. They look very similar. Its lined up minerals make it easy to split into thin sheets for blackboards or roof tiles. Schist is a glittery metamorphic rock with wavy lines of minerals and new crystals like garnets grow in it. The minerals in gneiss line up into black and white bands that look like a zebra skin. But maybe the best known of all the metamorphic rocks is marble. 
Marble, made from limestone, is a beautiful rock that has been used for centuries to make statues and buildings. Tsunamis, or tidal waves. Long distance tsunami. In 1964, there was a huge earthquake in Alaska. Enormous tsunamis caused by the quake destroyed towns along the Alaskan coast. Because the oceans are so big, there is time to warn people before the tsunami can get across the ocean. A giant wave! Tsunamis, which are sometimes called tidal waves, actually have nothing to do with tides, though they certainly are waves. Most of them are caused when faults in the ocean floor move and shove the ocean floor up or down. The shifting of the faults in the ocean floor sends shock waves into the ocean water, which creates enormous waves. When a tsunami reaches shallow water near an island or a coast, it slows down and the water piles up, growing larger and larger as the water gets shallower and shallower. By the time it hits land, it has become a gigantic and dangerous wave. Disaster strikes. Some tsunamis are caused by volcanoes. During the famous 1883 eruption of the volcanic island of Krakatoa in Indonesia, the whole volcano, which was the whole island, collapsed into the ocean and caused numerous tsunamis. Thousands of people were killed by Krakatoa, but most died from the giant waves rather than from the eruptions. Dramatic stuff happens at a fault, like earthquakes. Caverns by Keisha. Click on the tabs to see the different sections of my report. How caves are formed. Most caves form in areas where there's limestone rock and where there's a lot of rain. Here's why. The water sinks down through cracks in the limestone and collects in underground rivers. This water dissolves the cracks into wider cracks that get larger and larger over thousands of years. Eventually, whole areas collapse underground to form tunnels and caves. This is erosion on the inside of the earth. Acid makes caves too. Now, you may ask, how can water dissolve a hard rock? Well, as rainwater sinks through the ground, it picks up minerals that turn the water into a weak acid. The acid dissolves the calcite mineral that makes up limestone. In fact, you can even do a calcite test. All you have to do is put drops of vinegar on a likely rock. If it fizzles, it might be limestone. Cave formations. Stalactites. Stalactites are like underground icicles, except they're made of minerals. As water seeps through the roof of the cave, each drop leaves behind some of the mineral calcite that is dissolved from the limestone rock. Over time, this calcite builds up, creating solid icicle shapes that hang down from the cave ceiling. Remember, the C in stalactite stands for ceiling. Cave deposits. As water underground runs through the limestone, it dissolves the rock's minerals. As the underground water evaporates in the cave, it leaves the minerals behind as wonderful deposits on the ceiling, floor, and walls of the cave. Stalagmites. Stalagmites are carrot-shaped formations that build up on the ground of a cave as water drips down from its ceiling. Like stalactites, they grow very slowly. If stalactites and stalagmites join, they form columns. Remember, the G in stalagmite stands for ground. Clues to caves below. Sometimes there are clues on top of the land that will tell you if there are caves underneath. The most useful clue is called a sinkhole. Sinkholes show where caves have caved in or where a stream begins to flow underground. Areas with large rounded hills that have many caves and sinkholes are called karst areas. Famous Caves Carlsbad Caverns Carlsbad Caverns National Park in New Mexico, USA has some of the world's largest and most beautiful stalactites and stalagmites. 
Geologists know that the caverns are 60 million years old. The caverns are also home to thousands of bats. What a great place to visit. Borneo Caves On Borneo, a Malaysian island in the Pacific, there are two sets of important caves. Sarawak Chamber is the world's biggest single cave room. It's big enough to hold 16 football fields. Naya Caves is the site of an important discovery. Ancient tools and pottery were found there. They were left by Stone Age people living in Borneo over 40,000 years ago. Mammoth Cave A cave is a hollow area under the earth. Most caves are formed by underground water that dissolves limestone, a sedimentary rock. A cavern is a large cave, usually with many connecting tunnels and rooms. Lava caves are formed when tunnels that were carved by lava flows become empty. They might not look like much on the outside, but geodes are awesome on the inside. Geodes by Ralphie. Click on the tabs to check out other sections of my report. Mineral, rock, or crystal? Mineral. Minerals are the building blocks of rocks. But what exactly is a mineral? Well, minerals are always solids and they're natural, which means they're not made by people. They're not alive and have never been alive. A mineral is made from one or more chemical ingredients which are arranged in certain shapes called crystals. Rock. All rocks are made of minerals. If you look at a chunk of granite, you'll see that it's made out of different colored pieces. These pieces are the rock's minerals. Although some rocks are made out of only one mineral, most are made of more than one kind. In fact, rocks get their names by what minerals are in them. Crystal. There are six basic crystal shapes that result in different sizes and patterns of a crystal face. Light reflected off of a crystal face is what we see glittering. That's how we know it's a crystal. Mineral Properties what you can see. Every mineral has special properties. These are clues we use to identify it. Some properties are things like a crystal shape. Another property is color. Some minerals, like malachite, are always one color. But many minerals can fool us by appearing in many different colors. And another property is luster, which is the way minerals reflect light. Pyrite, or fool's gold, always looks shiny like a mirror, while quartz always looks glassy. True colors. Although minerals may form in lots of colors, they have one true color, which you can see when the mineral is ground up. To see this color, scrape the sample across the rough back of a tile. This test, called a streak test, shows the mineral's true color in the streak that it leaves behind. Most minerals leave a white streak, which you can't see, but metallic minerals leave streaks of distinct colors. Crystal shapes. Large or small. Some crystals grow to be very large and some are very small. The size of the crystal depends on how it is formed. If a crystal is formed slowly, with plenty of room, it will be large. If the crystal is formed very quickly, it'll be small. Following rules. Crystals always form in regular geometric shapes. There are six main crystal families. Some families form shapes like cubes, such as galena or halite, which is salt. Another family forms crystals that look like six-sided columns topped with a pyramid, like quartz. But all minerals follow the rules for their family. They always build certain shapes or combinations of those shapes. Outer shape, inner beauty. Minerals are made up of chemical ingredients, and these chemicals are always arranged in a particular pattern. When a mineral crystal forms, its crystal face shows the inner arrangement of chemical ingredients. Where minerals form? Geodes. On the outside, a geode looks like a gray or light brown sandy ball. But crack it open, and inside are beautiful crystals. Most geodes form in a hole in igneous rock. 
Dissolved chemicals in the hole slowly form well-shaped mineral crystals. The birth of minerals. Most minerals form within rocks as magma cools. They also form alone when hot groundwater from nearby magma flows through cracks in an older rock. This water holds dissolved chemicals, and when this cools, the chemicals combine to form solid minerals. Special geode minerals. Most of the minerals found in geodes are either calcite or quartz. If you break open a geode and can scratch the crystals with a knife, they're probably calcite. If the crystals are hard to scratch, they're quartz. Earthquakes prove that the land we live on is always moving. things in caves like stalagmites and stalactites. It's amazing to think that something as big as the Grand Canyon was made by a river. Shields are cool once you crack them open. <laughs> sometimes volcanoes are explosive and sometimes they're not. and the ocean floor. We live on top of the crust. The crust is the thinnest part of the earth, sort of like the skin of a peach. Mostly mantle. The middle layer of the earth is the mantle. This is the thickest layer of the earth, just like the main fruity section is the thickest part of the peach. The mantle is incredibly hot. Globs of melted rock, called magma, are always trying to squeeze their way up through the top part of the mantle and through the crust. Sometimes, the magma manages to make it all the way up and through to the top, where it comes out of a volcano. Inside at the core, the Earth is a sphere made of three bayed layers. The inside layer, deep in the center of the Earth, is called the core. If the Earth were the same size as a peach, the core would be about the size of the peach pit. There are two parts to the core. The inner core is made of solid metal, but it's the hottest part of the earth. And the outer core is made of molten metal. Creating crust underwater. Underwater volcanoes. The magma that forces its way up from the mantle forms huge ranges of volcanoes way down deep on the ocean floor, called a mid-ocean ridge. We know this from scientists who have gone down to the bottom of the ocean in submersibles.
Black Smokers In areas of the mid-ocean ridge that have active volcanoes, there are also underwater geysers called hydrothermal vents. They are formed when seawater sinks down through cracks in the ocean floor. Down there, close to the magma chamber, the water gets heated and shoots back up again. Some underwater geysers are called black smokers because the water shooting out of these has picked up tiny dark minerals like manganese. The Subduction Zone by Carlos. Click on the tab to see the other section of this report. Destroying Crust. Ring of Fire. If you look at a map of active volcanoes and earthquakes, you'll see that most of them occur around the Pacific Ocean. Indonesia, Japan, the northwestern United States, Mexico, Chile. They all have them. This pattern is called the Ring of Fire. What comes up must go down. You might wonder, since new crust is being made all the time, if the Earth is getting bigger. Well, it's not. And that's because sooner or later, these plates have to sink back down into the mantle. Thin ocean plates will sink down beneath a thick plate that has a continent on top of it. So the ocean plate gets shoved or subducted down into the mantle, and the ocean floor is turned back into mantle rock. Hotspot volcanoes. How are they made? Some volcanoes form in the ocean in the middle of a plate. Deep in the Earth's mantle, a hot area of magma called a plume bursts up into the crust to erupt for a while. This gradually forms a huge volcano that may rise above the ocean surface to form a volcanic island. Where can I find one? Many hotspot volcanoes are located in the Pacific Ocean. If you look at a map of its sea floor, you'll see many chains of islands that form from a hot spot. In warm oceans, coral reefs grow in the shallow water around volcanic islands. When the volcanoes erode below the surface, these reefs are left behind and are now called atolls. Volcanoes by Wanda. See all those tabs? Click on them to check out the different sections of my report. Volcano Basics. What are they? Some mountains are volcanoes. They are made when hot molten rock called magma spills or explodes out of holes in the earth. These holes are called vents. The magma collects in a magma chamber deep under a volcano. The pressure in the magma chamber builds up until the magma pushes up and comes out on the surface of the earth. After it reaches the outside of the earth, Magma is called lava. As lava cools, it hardens and builds up on top of the mountain. This makes the mountain get bigger every time there's a volcanic eruption. Composite volcanoes. Composite or strato volcanoes are made from lava from both types of eruptions. Some of these eruptions are quiet and result in lava flow and others are really explosive and create ash. Composite volcanoes have the shape we usually think of when we imagine a volcano. There are three basic volcano types. Shield volcanoes, cinder volcanoes, and composite or strato volcanoes. The biggest of these, shield volcanoes, are broad and have been made by lava which flows for a very long way before it cools. Shield volcanoes are made from the lava that cools to form basalt. Cinder volcanoes. Cinder volcanoes are tall and steep and form quickly. Their thick, sticky magma makes it hard for gases to escape. But when the gases do pass through, they cause very explosive eruptions with gritty volcanic ash which builds up a small mountain. Cinder volcanoes. Cinder volcanoes are tall and steep and form quickly. Their thick, sticky magma makes it hard for gases to escape. But when the gases do pass through, they cause very explosive eruptions with gritty volcanic ash which builds up a small mountain. Volcanoes around the world. Hawaii. The biggest volcanoes on Earth are located above hot spots in the Earth's mantle. Mauna Loa on the island of Hawaii is a shield volcano formed above a hot spot. A hot spot is an area of the Earth which is always forming magma. The hot spot stays in the same place but the ocean plates above it move over time, causing new volcanoes to be formed in a string. This is how many of the Pacific Islands were formed. 
Volcanoes. Good or bad? Do you think volcanoes are dangerous mountains that can harm people, destroy forests, and crash buildings? You're right. But volcanoes also make new rocks and land, and they create beautiful mountains. Plus, the minerals in this new rock help make soil that's great for farming. That's why so many people have chosen to live near volcanoes throughout time. And scientists are learning more about volcanoes so that people living near them can be prepared. Mount St. Helens. Two months before Mount St. Helens, a composite volcano in Washington State erupted, it began having little earthquakes. The magma chamber inside pushed out, creating a huge bulge on the north side of the mountain, alerting scientists that it might erupt soon. Suddenly, the part of the mountain with the bulge slid down the mountain, and as it slid, pressure was released. The entire north side of the mountain was blown out. Ash rained down. Shockwaves toppled trees, and melted ice and snow caused avalanches of mud. In a few short moments, the mountain was reduced by one sixth of its size. Fifty-nine people died from the eruption. Today, the area is a national monument where people can study volcanoes. Mount Vesuvius. One famous composite volcano that killed many people is Mount Vesuvius, near the town of Pompeii in Italy. In 79 A.D., the volcano erupted. It created a speeding avalanche of superheated gases and volcanic ash, which swept down on Pompeii. For three days, this hot debris buried the town of the 2,000 people in it. 1,700 years later, the buried town was discovered and dug up. Today, if you look in the hollows of the solidified ash, you can still see the shapes of people, animals, and even food. They tell us the story of Pompeii's terrifying last days. Igneous rocks, extrusive rocks. Igneous rocks that form outside the Earth are called extrusive rocks. They form from cooled lava, which is magma that comes out of the ground. Since the lava cools very quickly, the rocks have very small crystals, which are hard to see. Some extrusive igneous rocks are rhyolite, andesite, and basalt. Pumice is an extrusive igneous rock, but it is filled with holes created by trapped gases. Pumice can float because it has so much air trapped in it. Obsidian is a type of rock that cools so fast there is no time for crystals to grow. It's often called volcanic glass because it looks and breaks like glass. Hot rocks. Igneous rocks begin deep in the earth as magma, which is hot, melted rock material. When a volcano erupts, the molten lava and ash cools into extrusive igneous rocks on the surface of the earth. Other igneous rocks form when the magma cools underground. These are called intrusive igneous rocks. All igneous rocks are made out of minerals, and they are named by what minerals they contain and how the rock was formed. Intrusive rocks. Igneous rocks that cool inside the earth are intrusive rocks. Since the magma cools slowly, the minerals in intrusive rocks have time to become large crystals. Their mineral crystals are large enough to see without a microscope. Some intrusive igneous rocks are granite, diorite, gabbro, and peridotite. It's really neat to think that new rocks are being formed all the time. Rocks are rocking. Active volcanoes are chock full of exciting stuff like magma and gases. Just click on the bus to start the adventure. Click on the gear shift to find out where this bus can take us. Then, click on the go button to get there. All you have to do to get outside is click on that door button on the right. Do you have gold fever? Pan for gold nuggets by moving 
Carlos with your left and right arrow keys. Flip the sifter by pressing the space bar. Good luck!
Malcolm. Do you feel like helping Arnold find the missing samples from his rock and mineral collection? First, listen closely. There are three kinds of rocks. Igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic. Arnold is missing one of each, and he's also missing a mineral. Now, check out those four empty spaces in Arnold's collection box. Click on one to hear your first clue about the missing samples. I can show you some really interesting things with this 3D processor. This Earth Kitchen is super cool. To be a rock chef, just follow the recipe. If you're not sure where to find an ingredient, check out the shakers or look through the drawers. If you need help with the Earth Kitchen, just click on me. which is also called rock salt, bake some salty water or ocean water on low heat. To make a calcite, mix calcium, carbon, and two oxygens. Excellent! You just made calcite. evaporate, which is also
are the building blocks of rocks, and many of them take crystal forms. Minerals are found all over the Earth. Arnold's missing mineral is halite. I bet you have some pretty bright ideas on how to find it. Click on the rock transformer handle to set the transformations in motion. Igneous rocks form when magma or lava cools and crystallizes. They're usually found near land volcanoes or at mid-ocean ridges. Arnold's missing igneous rock is diorite. That's right, diorite. I'm quite sure you'll find it. Igneous rocks form when magma or lava cools and crystallizes. They're usually found near land volcanoes or at mid-ocean ridges. Arnold's missing igneous rock is diorite. That's right, diorite. I'm quite sure you'll find it. Minerals are the building blocks of rocks, and many of them take crystal forms. Minerals are found all over the Earth. Arnold's missing mineral is halite. I bet you have... Minerals are the building blocks of rocks. Sedimentary rocks are made when tiny grains get pressed together. They are found in many places, like canyons, faults, and caverns. Arnold's missing sedimentary rock is rock salt, or evaporite. It'd be mighty nice of you to find it. Sedimentary rocks are made when tiny... Metamorphic rocks have been changed by heat or pressure under the earth. They are found at faults and places where very deep rocks have been exposed, like the bottom of a canyon. Arnold's missing metamorphic rock is quartzite. Of course, he has his sights set on you finding it. Don't be shy. Click around. into the rock transformer and see what kind of rock it's made out of, or you can put a rock in and see what it makes. Quartz is used to make wristwatches. is used to make school chalk. This rock is untransformable. Sorry. This rock is untransformable. Sorry. This rock is untransformable. Sorry. Obsidian was used to make Native American arrowheads. Granite are used to make building blocks. This rock is untransformable. Sorry. Shale is used to make bricks. This rock is untransformable. Sorry. Marble is used to make statues. 
like this beautiful one of me. This rock is untransformable. Sorry. This rock is untransformable. Sorry. Now you get to dress up me and Keisha in whatever outfit you choose. Click on the arrows to make us try on all kinds of hats, shirts, pants, and shoes. What kind of volcanic eruption can you create? Select your variables, low, medium, or high heat, and gas or no gas. Then, click on the button to start erupting. The chances of a volcano forming are pretty slim. You use high heat and gas. Try another combination. <laughs> this composite volcano was made with medium heat and no gas. The lava was so sticky that it didn't flow very far before it became solid. That's why this volcano is so tall. The lava flows are made of andesite. just made a shield volcano by mixing high heat without gas. Shield volcanoes have runny lava that flows out across a wide area instead of making a cone. The chances of a volcano forming are pretty slim if you use high heat and gas. Try another combination. The chances of a volcano forming Can you get your bat out of the cave maze first? Use your up and down arrow keys to move your bat. Use the left and right arrow keys to control your bat's flying speed.
This is a map of what the world looked like 250 million years ago. There was one big ocean, and all the continents were joined in one huge landmass called Pangea. So, you want to play the Pangea puzzle? Click on a puzzle piece and drag it onto the globe. Click again to paste it down. If you put it in the right place, it'll stick. If not, the piece goes back to its original spot. Looks like that piece fits perfectly. Great fit! Are you psyched for the next puzzle? We just zoomed ahead 150 million years after Pangea. This is what the world looked like 135 million years ago. You can see Africa and South America. Notice that Europe and North America are starting to split apart too. You must be a puzzle expert. All right!
Ready to solve the next puzzle? And now we're looking at the map of the world as it is today. There are seven distinct continents. North America, South America, Europe, Africa, Asia, Antarctica, and Australia. That piece definitely goes there. Good move! Looks like that piece fits perfectly. You solved that puzzle perfectly! How quickly can you help me across this giant fault? Control my jumping power by using your mouse. The longer you hold down the button, the farther I'll jump when you let go. <laughs> wow! <laughs> no! Hooray for geysers! Wow! Watch out! Wow! 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 <laughs> wow! <laughs> Terrific! <laughs> Wow! <laughs> wow! Wow! <laughs> yes! 
Thank goodness for that guy, sir. Watch out! Goodness for that geyser! <laughs> Terrific! It's geode time. Click on a crystal to deposit water full of minerals into the hole. Then start the growing experiment. lava flow to hit it with water. That'll stop it in its tracks.
to try your hand at cave painting? Just pick a thumb size, dip it into pigment, and start drawing on the wall. Can you help Phoebe and me beat Liz in finding the hidden fossil fuels? Click anywhere above the oil coal line and Phoebe will search for coal. Click anywhere below the oil coal line and I'll drill for oil. But you have to take turns with Liz. some coal. Awesome! We discovered coal. Great work! We just unearthed some coal.
awesome! We discovered coal! Great work! We just unearthed some coal! More coal? Radical! some coal.
copper. We just drilled into oil. Phoebean. Click on the gear shift to find out where this bus can take us. Then click on the go button to get there. sedimentary rock, we could find fossils. Some fossils are made from the remains of plants and animals preserved in sand or mud. Liz, your sandwich is a great example of sedimentary rock layers. See, it's got these different layers. Bread, jelly, peanut butter, and more bread. Right. Like layers of sedimentary rock, mud, silt, and sand.
Layers of sedimentary rock are called strata. I guess that means this canyon is a rock extravaganza. <laughs> Welcome to the Fossil Puzzles. Let's get started. Click on the arrows to choose a puzzle piece. Then, drag the piece to where it belongs. Good luck! Nice work! Way to figure out where that piece goes. Oh, I'm impressed! This is what the floor of the ocean looked like 400 million years ago. Those fish are the oldest fish we know about. They had heavy armor made out of bony scales. Next puzzle. Whoa, that gust of wind blew sand right into my eyes. Did you know that it takes millions of years for sand to turn into sedimentary rock? Do you have gold fever? Pan for gold nuggets by moving Carlos with your left and right arrow keys. Flip the sister by pressing the space bar. Good luck! Welcome to the Fossil... <laughs> the most beautiful crystals grow inside of geodes. Sure, I said I love geodes, but I don't remember saying I wanted to go inside one. Ralphie, did you know that pencil lead is not really lead at all? It's a soft mineral called graphite, and graphite is made of the same ingredients as diamonds. Now that we're actually inside of a geode, everything has become crystal clear. These crystals all look like they're different. There must be a million different crystal shapes. Actually, Ralphie, there are only six basic crystal shapes. But they come in many, many different sizes. This geode is pure genius. <laughs> this crystal looks glassy. It's geode time.
the map of what the world Subduction time! At my old school, we never got subducted. Now what? The ocean is great and getting shoved so far down that it's entering the part of the Earth called the mantle. When this happens, the edge of the plate changes and becomes part of the mantle. But how do we get out of here? Well, we won't just go with the flow. That would take us millions of years to get out of here. So, come on, bus, do your stuff. this ride in my hot air balloon. The Frizz is definitely the most interesting teacher I've ever had. How quickly can you help? Hey, what's all this talk about plates? Is it time to eat? No, Ralphie. The surface of the Earth is made up of round, flat pieces called plates. These plates are like the pieces of a giant jigsaw puzzle. According to my research, the earth is like this peach. The crust which we stand on is like the skin of the peach. The earth's mantle is like the fruity part. And the hot core is like the peach pit. Hey, when you're done with that, can I have it? I'm kind of hungry. I feel the earth move under my feet. Metamorphism can turn shale into slate or limestone into marble. That is so hot, it's cool. This rift valley is so cool. There are so many layers to examine in the fault walls. As I always say, faults are fabulous. I wonder what she eats for breakfast. <laughs> Can you help Phoebe and me?
are a favorite of mine, a mighty fine mountain. But there's more here than meets the eye. Huh? Steam? Mountains don't usually have steam. Unless... Unless what? Uh, never mind, Arnold. It's probably not a volcano. Oh, I sure hope you're right. What's that machine? It's a tilt meter. It measures bulges in the ground to see whether the melted rock underneath is rising to the surface. Oh, so if the molten rock is rising, we might get to see the volcano erupt. I've never seen a mountain smoke before. I wonder if it has a cough, too. Maybe I could skip the eruption part and do a report for extra credit instead. This is a seismograph. It records earthquakes, which can happen under a volcano. Earthquakes? Volcanoes? Yep. If an earthquake happens under a volcano, that means molten rock called magma is rising towards the surface. Then the volcano could erupt. Sometimes animals can tell when a volcano is about to erupt, and they scram. <laughs> Liz, don't worry. When it's time to go, we'll be safely on the bus. <coughs> How long can we keep all this lava? What kind of volcano? I could hang upside down like all these bats. Hey Liz, if you stand there long enough, maybe a stalagmite could grow on your head. I may study this stalagmite. Then again, I stalag might not. It's pretty dark down here. I bet it's a great place to play hide-and-seek. I've never seen a rock this shape. It looks just like an icicle. It's a bat race! Do you want to try your hand at cave painting?